Hi, and welcome. Impressionism, what is it? It's an artistic style that tries to capture a feeling or experience rather than capturing an accurate depiction. It's similar in intent to tonalism, where you would use a limited color palette or a limited subject matter like a sunrise or sunset to convey a mood. Uh, today we're looking at Van Gogh's wheat field and Cypress and how one might attempt to paint it. And before I forget, I've been working with Kraken Fine Art. They're an art gallery out of Central Virginia. I'll put a link to them below and you can get some of my work there. So go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, subscribe and click that notification bell and you'll be alerted to new videos. And please share this video with someone who you think might learn from these fundamentals. I'm Kendall Stump and welcome to the Stump Project. Okay, so when Van Gogh painted, um, he he would start with uh, he started with a tone canvas similar to this. Uh, a lot of times he used subpar material, uh, maybe something that's uh, uh, equivalent to maybe a cardboard or something like that, uh, like um, hand pressed uh, pulp paper, uh, wood pulp to make his own paper or something to that nature. It was uh, very poor. His paint, he would use old brushes and thick paint and uh, and sometimes palette knives. So similar to the things that we've used here, although my brushes aren't necessarily old, I do use some old brushes. Those Otterslof brushes that I use every now and again. He would use something similar to that. Uh, and then he would also use something that's called a perspective frame. Now a perspective frame uh, would, be, would be a big frame. And you can't really tell in here. It'd be, a, it'd be a big square frame and it'd have wires that come across it like this, wires or string or what have you, and one across the center. That would obviously be your horizon line. Uh, but this would help to focus the point of view or the, or the perspective uh, into something that would be, uh, that he would be looking for. So he used those as, uh, assist uh, painting or art creation assistance tools uh, to help develop his work. Uh, so to Today, how are we going to tackle this? So let's just start with a let's start with a uh, with a sketch. Um, we know the horizon line of Van Gogh did in this particular painting. Uh, he divided his canvas into thirds, so the horizon line itself would be right around the lower third, uh, right around in here. Let's block in a shape. Uh, he had a mass of foliage there. He had some uh, some hilly mountains, mountainous areas. They came almost up to the to the top third. Uh, he had that cypress tree. Again, I'm doing this, you're just looking for, uh, for, for basic shapes and not trying to capture. Well, that's the whole point of Impressionism, right? You're not trying to capture everything uh, with an exact detail, a photorealistic element. Uh, you're trying to convey a mood uh, or an event. Some more light uh, foliage through here. And I'm just sketching this in with uh, just a flat and just get, putting in my, my rough shapes. So I'm also using, I have my iPad off to the side and with a, with a photo reference on it. So that's what I'm using for, for, uh, for a reference. Show you that, it's right down here. And then this piece come down again. I'm not trying to make an exact duplicate of, of Van Gogh's piece. Uh, I'm just trying to get an idea 
of how something like this might might be built. What was the thought processes when when he went into to painting this, uh, knowing what we know about creating art? Okay, so that's basics, right? That's our sketch. That's basic. So we're going to start planning around that. Obviously, there's a whole bunch going on in the sky. There's uh, the blue that's in the sky feels more almost like it's a, a teal. So I'm going to take some cerulean blue, some titanium white, and I'm just going to put just a smidge of yellow in it just to green it up. And uh, of course, I, I tone my canvas before I forget. I tone my canvas with liquid just to help speed up the, the drying time of the oil paint. Uh, any of you who have uh, followed along with me for any period of time know that I just love the stuff and I use it in virtually every painting. So I think I have this color. So this is about the color that I want. Um, and then uh, we're, again, we're just going to go in and, and block in shapes. Yeah, and this is another reason why you would tone your canvas. You see how bright that looks on this dark surface and it, it's just because it's on dark surface um, it goes to prove the example that or the the idea that you need dark to show light it's actually not that light of a color if you look at it on its own see it's light but it's not like bright white so then what we do is we're just going to identify certain areas which have that color There, and I think that's the the teal blue, and then he had uh, more of a purpley blue. So I'm going to take some uh, aquamarine. I'm not rinsing off my brush. Uh, aquamarine blue, <clears throat> cadmium red light, and uh, if I need some uh, some more of the cerulean blue and a little bit of the titanium white just to lighten it up a little bit, I'll I'll do that. And we'll start putting in the darker shade. And as you're doing this, uh, if you see or can identify some specific shapes, um, go ahead and, and start putting them in. Now the difference between what we're doing here and how Van Gogh actually painted this is that he painted this more in a, of a fluid style and he could just, he had the ability to just let his uh, imagination go with it to try to capture whatever it is that he was trying to capture in the moment. What we're doing is trying to replicate that. So we're missing out on so much. We're missing out on his experience and his mood and, and everything else that's going to go along with it. Um, so we would never, ever be able to to replicate this piece, or any artist's work for that matter. You're not in the same place as they were when they painted. Even you, as an artist, will never be able to replicate that one piece. I mean, you can paint another and it's gonna look like it, but you're, you're not in the same mental place when you painted it to begin with. 
So it won't have the same energy, it won't have the same feel, it won't have the same flow. So even if you're painting something over again, like say you're painting a, a portrait, your, your, your paintings will, they're, they're still unique. They're still very unique. Here into this uh, blue hilly area that's far off in the background and at this point we we're going to want the uh, contrast to be a little bit higher uh, to stand up against the sky now some of this some of this here is going to be white so we're going to we'll, we'll lighten that so it'll, it will help pop these these mountainous areas out a little bit Wiping off the brush, we're not cleaning the brush. You can still see there's there's all kinds of paint and stuff on my brush. Um, I, I'm I'm I want to keep that uh, I want to keep the the tone or the color palette throughout the painting, and I don't want the color starkness to to change too much. So now we all went into titanium white, and I'm starting to put in the lighter values. You can see we worked a little bit darker from darker to light. And we're putting this on, letting it mix with the the paint below it because we don't want just just flat white on here. And we're letting our brush strokes. If you get too much paint on your on your brush, just just wipe it off. And this is where we can start letting our brush strokes start to get a little fluid. We aren't necessarily uh, just trying to block in color at this point. We're starting to put in uh, a little bit of of the what we can call it detail a little bit of the interest take note of fluidity of the brush strokes
I'm just trying to go through and kind of emphasizing some of this uh, blue and darker blue and it feels to me that it came out a little bit gray um, and, and that's fine uh, we, you can always adjust the color hue later on uh, with a little bit of glazing what happened what I believe just so that you know what I believe happened is the the tone that I put on my canvas uh, mixed a little bit too much with the paint that I was putting on there I believe that the color that I had was correct it's just the 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 tone on the canvas uh, mixed with it a little bit too much and it really graded out so but that's that's okay I think we can still convey everything that we want to convey and now I'm going to go over this and and you notice I'm working a little bit uh, lighter a little bit lighter a little bit lighter uh, with every pass and I'm going to continue to do that uh, working dark to light keeping my my brush strokes fluid When Van Gogh tend, tended to paint, at least in this scene, he didn't adhere to general rules of, of painting. He just did it to, to convey uh, this experience or this event. And what I mean by that what is, uh, generally speaking, you've heard me talk about it before, as things move away from you, they tend to take on the color of the environment and they lose contrast. Well, what he did here was this, this mountainous area in the back, as, as it's to portray its distance, he didn't necessarily allow it to lose contrast. He did allow it to change, uh, to change value or color hue and to blend in more with the environment. And that's how he portrayed this distance. Pulling some of the same um, mountain color back up into the into the clouds, just to just bring these two areas together a little bit. And then we'll start by start with these trees by adding a base of dark. Uh, 
I'm pulling up into the into the lighter color because if you're not if you pull it down if you pull a, start in the lighter color and pull it down you'll pull it right into your dark and you don't you don't want that it's just going to like that right there it will if you're not careful you'll muddy your your muddy your dark you don't want you want that to happen for some texture you can twist your brush just a little bit and to get that peak I'm just touching the I'm taking my my flat and I'm just touching the tip of it and this was giving me that that sharp peak so we have that dark piece there we know we've got a dark piece right here and probably some uh, darker green right in here. It's not quite as dark, but it's okay. We can light. We'll we will lighten it up. We take some cadmium yellow light, a little bit of uh, cerulean blue, and then the mixture I had on my brush already, which was which was ultramarine blue, raw umber, and some sap green. I'm going to put that on and let that mix. I just want to, to lighten some of the areas. And I'm just using the, I'm not using the, I'm, I'm using the edge of my brush like this and I'm just kind of drawing in lines. Just to get the flow of the tree. Be cautious not to overwork this. You don't want to do that. You want to leave it the strokes rough and loose I encourage you to take a little bit of artistic license with some of this to uh, to make it make sense for you. I mean, really, this is an intent on understanding Impressionism. And again, Impressionism is just trying to capture an event or a, an emotion. And it doesn't have to be, or it is not intended to be uh, any kind of an exact replica of of what you're seeing so if you're seeing this grassy field impressionism is not meant to be you capturing a photorealistic element of this of this grassy field it's about capturing what this grassy field makes you feel and if van gogh was looking at this and you, and you look at the the clouds and how turbulent they are Maybe that is an insight into his emotional state. And we know that he obviously, he had some, uh, some issues that he was working through. Um, these kind of things can be an insight into our psyche, our personal psyche. So keep that in mind as you're trying to, to do this. We're, we're not trying to, like I said, you can't replicate. You can't duplicate what anybody else did, even yourself because our state of mind is unique in that moment. Switching brushes here, just going in, just going in and, and uh, to allow us to get some of these brush strokes in to, to capture some of this additional uh, detail. Remember just to keep them, keep your brush strokes fluid, don't overwork an area. Use this as an opportunity to blend some areas. The brush strokes I find um, are trying to convey the the form of the of the object.
But I kind of like to do this painting again with a palette knife and just see what, what kind of things we can come up with. I think it'd be interesting. Use some of that sky color to fill in some of these gaps, maybe where you wanted some of it to peek through. putting a base coat of this orangey with warm yellowy orangey ochre <laughs> color down to be the, the foundation for our wheat field. switch brushes here. I'm going to go with a little bit smaller one just to help capture some of those brush strokes.
And in doing this and in laying this out, um, so Impressionism would stop about here, right? So we, you, you've got the, uh, the bulk of the color laid out and, and, you, and pretty, we pretty much captured um, the, the thought and the idea of this, right? But you can continue this from this point and you can continue to flesh it out and you can continue to refine it and uh, because again impressionism is just meant to uh, quickly convey uh, a state right whether it be an emotion or an event or something like that um, after you've quickly captured that and you can do with it whatever you want I mean you can continue to work on it and refine it and add details if you like and uh, you know what what have you so I encourage you to explore explore uh, impressionism and see what it can do for you see what it does for for your uh, for your art style uh, unlike tonalism you're not necessarily limited to uh, specific landscapes or uh, a, a, a moodiness you uh, you have the freedom of capturing anything uh, a picnic a uh, a sunny a sunny brook a, a spring day a summer day summer night starry night and while uh, Van Gogh I believe primarily used um, one point perspective. I encourage you to apply this to to your style and your idea of perspective, whatever it is that you're trying to to uh, to capture. Take some, uh, take some artistic liberties with some of this stuff too. If you see something that's not quite right or you would do something a little bit differently, then do it. Just keep within the boundaries of the style that you're trying to emulate though. Like right here, for example, I would really like, I know that there's uh, very little contrast, like we mentioned before, between the, 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 the far ground, the far background and, and the, the mid ground and all that. But I'm taking a little bit of liberty to uh, create some just to help uh, differentiate the planes of existence on here. So I really hope that you enjoyed this and everything that uh, Impressionism has to offer. I may continue to explore this a little bit more and if I do, uh, go ahead and follow me on social media, especially Instagram. I'll put the link in the description below. Uh, I, I usually post my uh, artwork out on there as I, as I finish it uh, or update it or make changes to it, what have you. If you want to see something special or have a question, uh, drop me a line in the comments to let me know. Uh, keep studying, keep practicing, and go on and create something awesome. You can find inspiration anywhere. Don't be afraid to look. I'll see you next time.